Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna show you a step-by-step -step guide on how to build a GPT-40 chatbot that is capable of processing images. Many of you requested this kind of tutorial, so let's do it. Obviously, this functionality can have a lot of applications across many industries. You can use it for customer support, for example, with hardware issues. Customers can send images of error messages like device condition or some kind of faulty parts. The chatbot can then analyze these images and guide the customer through possible solutions, kind of troubleshoot it, or it can redirect them to technical support if needed. You can use it for e-commerce, for visual search, right? For example, customers can upload the images of items they are interested in purchasing. The chatbot can recognize these images and then suggest similar items available in the store. Imagine you like an outfit on Pinterest. You can make a screenshot of it, then go to an e-commerce store and instead of spending half an hour searching for similar products, you could just upload the screenshot to the chatbot and it will suggest related items. So it's kind of image recognition plus product recommendations combined and I already know a few stores that implement it. At our agency we get leads asking for that quite often. So it's not a concept for the future, it is working now. And yeah, if you need a solution like this, you can also reach out to us at bosar.agency. We have a team of developers and we can custom build it for you. Another interesting use case is for insurance, for claims processing, right? I don't know about you, but I've had a few car incidents in my life, luckily nothing serious. But anyway, every time the insurance company asked me to take the pictures of the damage, and then send them to, to the company so that real people were assessing the damage and the repair cost. Now with AI vision capabilities, policyholders just like me can upload images of damages and the chatbot can handle the rest. It can recognize the extent of the damage, assist in filing claims, and then provide estimates for repairs. And there are many more use cases. It's actually up to you to be creative and find a way to enhance your business with AI. But enough with the theory, let's now jump into the tutorial. So, in the video description, I'm gonna share the Reply template which contains all the code you need to implement this functionality. Once you click on that link, you'll find this Use Template button. Just click it, give it a name, and use template. Once the forking is done, the first thing to do is add your secret API key. Go to Secrets, then let's switch to the OpenAI developer platform, create a new secret key, give it a name, say GPT-40 vision, create secret key, okay, copy it and paste it as a value back in Replit. Click add secret and that's done. There is nothing else to change with this template. Now let me walk you through the code and explain how it works. This part is going to be a bit technical, so don't overthink it. You can use the template right away, so you can actually even skip this chapter and jump to the next one, to the limitations, but this time I decided to provide you with a quick overview, okay? So the structure of this project is quite simple. We only have two files, index.js and OpenAI service.js. Index.js is our server, okay? Chat is our route for requests from basically any chat in use, be it a WhatsApp chat or web chat, doesn't matter. It expects two fields, chat ID and message. Then we have the validation. If all the data is passed through and once validated, it is passed to the ask function, which is located in OpenAI service.js. This file contains only this function. First, we initialize OpenAI with the secret API key we set in the beginning. Here, we specify the model, which in this case is GPT-4 Omni, and pass the chat ID and message to the ask function. Here, we use a local database for development, but in production, we would use a database like MongoDB or MySQL, something like that, to store all messages for this chat. This is necessary to pass the entire message history in the request because we use the chat completions API instead of the assistance API. And if you check the OpenAI documentation, it clearly says that the chat completions API, unlike the assistance API, is not stateful. That means you have to manage the messages, including images you pass to the model yourself, if you want to pass the same image to the model multiple times, you will have to pass the image each time you make a request to the API. While using the assistance API, we could simply create a new thread and pass a new message to it. So when making a request, we either create or read messages from the database, then we form a new object 
for the request and pass it to the chat completions. We save the response in the database and return it to the requester, for example, to a web chat. Currently, there is no database, but it will be added when we actually use it. Now, there are some limitations to keep in mind, such as medical images. This model is not suitable for interpreting specialized medical images like CT scans, and shouldn't be used for medical advice, non-English, small text, rotation, etc. Actually, for non-English, they also claim that GPT-4.0 has the best vision and performance across non-English languages of any of our models. So if you choose to use GPT-4.0, it might perform well with non-English languages. I think the only way to find out is through testing. I know it's impossible to cover all your questions in my video in advance, so of course, feel free to ask them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer as many as possible. But also make sure to go to this page, I'll attach the link in the description, just scroll down and check out these frequently asked questions like what type of files can I upload? Is there a limit to the size of the image I can upload? And yes, by the way, there is strict image uploads to 20 megabytes per image. How do rate limits work with vision and so on and so forth. All right, let's finally do the demo and see how it works in practice. So I'm gonna click run to run the code and we've quickly prepared this demo page just for the purposes of this video. I'll go to the settings. Here I need to paste my dev URL from Replit. I'll just copy it from here, paste it, and make sure it ends with slash chat because that's our endpoint, right? Save it, and now I can try it out. So let's actually test some of the use cases I mentioned at the beginning of this video. I'll search for man oversized t-shirt. Oh, nice. Let's save this one. This is Uniqlo, <laughs> one of my favorite brands. Actually, I'm wearing the exact same t-shirt right now. All right, let's switch to our chatbot. I'm going to attach this picture and ask what's on this image. Allow it a few seconds to process the request. The image depicts a person standing against a plain background. The individual is wearing a loose fitting white t-shirt and light pink pants. Their left hand is in their pocket and they are looking to the side. All right, let's ask it, where can I buy such a t-shirt? Name the brand, okay? I can't identify specific brands or stores from images, however, Plain white t-shirts with a relaxed fit are generally available at many clothing retailers, blah, blah, blah. Some popular brands known for minimalistic designs like Uniqlo. Wow, that's great. And this is basically a general model, a general knowledge chatbot. We haven't even provided it with any you know, specific knowledge base or persona instructions. If we did, it would be even more specific and accurate. Let's do one more. For the second use case, I'll attach an image of a damaged car and ask what car is on this picture? What damage can you identify? Okay, the car in the image is an Audi, specifically an Audi A4. So it successfully identified the model. Then it identifies some of the damaged parts like the front right fender, the front right corner of the bumper, the front right headlight area. And again, guys, if it was a real life project for an insurance company, we would instruct the boat to ask more questions, to provide more images, kind of make them clear, etc. So it would avoid any uncertainty. And then based on the custom knowledge base, it would be able to estimate the repair costs. But for now, we know it is just a general model and a completely random picture, honestly. Still, let's ask it, can you estimate an approximate cost of repair in the US? Okay, and it says, estimating the cost of car repair from an image can be challenging due to the various factors involved, but I can offer a rough approximation based on common repair costs in the US. Then it provides an approximate cost of repair of each of the damaged parts. But I think if we scroll down, it says, yep, in total, the repair cost would range anywhere from around 2000 to 6000 or more, depending on the severity of the damage. I think that's a great use case. You can definitely save a lot of money and time if you are an insurance company or you can sell this solution to insurance companies if you run an AI agency or something like that. And let's try one more. It was for customer support like to get assistance with hardware issues, for example. So I'll attach this image of a laptop with a broken screen and I'll ask, what is that? How to fix it? 
All right, the image shows a MacBook with significant screen issues, horizontal and vertical lines, and distorted colors. To fix this issue, you can try the following steps. Step number one, restart your MacBook. Step number two, check for external display issues, and so on. It basically provides me with a default instruction to troubleshoot this kind of issue. Again, according to the general knowledge of the GPT model, it is not customized yet. And believe it or not, there are real people answering calls and advising customers on the exact same steps to do the troubleshooting. So of course, it's a no brainer to implement a chatbot like that, which can accept thousands of requests at the same time in different languages 24 seven and so on. By the way, please ignore the text formatting. I understand it's not easy to read. Of course, if this were a real project, we would ensure the outputs are well-structured and properly formatted. Okay, it's working. It can recognize images. Now you can be really flexible with it. You can take this chatbot, incorporate your business knowledge base, provide it with custom persona instructions, which would precisely describe the assistant's role, what it should do, what it shouldn't do. You can develop, for example, a product recommendation algorithm on top of it. Let's say it is for a makeup e-commerce store. You can send a picture of your face to this chatbot and it will suggest the most relevant products based on the unique features of your face. And then of course you can integrate it to your website or WhatsApp or Instagram, whatever it is you need. You just require the API endpoints to make the integration possible. Unfortunately, no code chatbot builders, which I showcased in my previous videos, such as VoiceFlow, BotPress or Chatbase, they don't support image processing. So you'd have to develop the front and solution by yourself. I mean, the widget for the chatbot, like this one that you can place on your website, right? That's actually our job. At our agency, we built these kind of integrations, features, and also front-end widgets as well. So again, do not hesitate to get in touch. But for now, that's it. The goal of this tutorial was to provide you guys with a workable template for an AI assistant that can process images. I hope that was useful, that you learned something and you can be proud of yourself. Thanks for watching. The next few videos will be absolutely mind blowing. Believe me, we have been working on them for a few weeks, spent absolutely ridiculous amount of time on that. So make sure to subscribe, you don't wanna miss it and I'll see you soon, bye.